television again got the world famous bluegrass salad boys with me here and girl hiya Marianne you fox oh we got the some of these guys have never been on television before and they're a little bit nervous tonight and everything you know and they're real real excited because their moms and dads are home watching them man I think it's so if you ever get the chance to do your own television show go for it Celebrity bowling, sweepstakes, The Price is Right, Mary Hart... Maybe not Mary Hart. <laughs> I love doing television. Where else would you get the chance to meet Frank Sinatra? Well, Las Vegas, or maybe if you're a senator, or an Australian columnist. <laughs> maybe a bartender, huh? <laughs> See, I can say things like that about Frank. He's not going to hit me. He never hit a kid with glasses. Besides, he's my friend. He's really something. We, uh, we worked together for the first time last year in uh, Lake Tahoe. And you know, a lot of people don't understand Frank. Like, like they say things about him, like, for instance, that Frank is a swinger. That is not true. Frank is not a swinger. He is the swinger. <laughs> I want to be very clear about that. All day, all night, if he didn't faint once in a while, he'd never get any rest. <laughs> That's true. You know, when I was watching him at Lake Tahoe, like, I think he's simply the greatest singer that I've ever heard. And I knew that I was going to learn a lot that week. 
and I, and I watched every one of his shows. And boy, that was exciting. And then after the show, I'd go down and I'd watch him in the dressing room. That was really exciting. <laughs> That's where I found out what he means when he says, uh, Dooby-dooby-doo. <laughs> He'll be... <laughs> Frank will be out here in a few minutes to tell you all about it himself, folks. Stick around. I hope you enjoy the show. Go for it. And now, here's John Dutchendorf. This is the jukebox, symbol of the great American art form, pop or music. And jukeboxes today are as much a part of growing up in the United States as blue jeans, white socks. When I went to high school, everybody wore blue jeans, and they always, they were pleated down the front, you know? The rich kids had theirs dry cleaned. <laughs> always ticked me off. You had your jeans, and then you had a comb about that long in your back pocket, and streamlined black shoes and white socks. Always white socks. My mom made me wear green socks, <laughs> blue socks, argyle socks, arg, arg, never white socks. The only pair of white socks that I owned, in fact, were some athletic socks, and those are the wrong kind of white socks. Michael O'Grady always had on the right kind of white socks. Michael O'Grady was the star fullback of our high school football team, and he was a big guy, and he was good-looking, and he was wealthy, and he had dry, clean jeans, <laughs> and he always had on the right hand of white socks, and he had this long, slick back hair and a duck tail, you know. I hated him. <laughs> I was never really big enough to play football. I was, uh, I was kind of small. In fact, the only play in my entire high school year, three years in high school, maybe three and a half, one play I got to play on, and that was a football kickoff on a game when our team was about 20 points ahead. I guess the coach figured it was safe, and I was on, what, what do they call that? Uh, the, the suicide squad. The suicide squad, and I was running down that field, man, and I was praying that that guy was going to come my way. Let me at him. I'll kill him. I can't <laughs> wait. I was just running just as hard as I could go, and sure enough, there were these two blockers coming across, and there was room for me right between them, and the guy that had the ball was right there, and I was going to get him. I mean, there was no doubt about it, and I was going just as fast as I could go, and he was running full speed, man, and I, I didn't so much tackle him as I just careened into him, and I, I blew him over. Bam! <laughs> and it hurt me. <laughs> it did. It hurt real bad. I jumped up, man, I wanted to be cool, and I was running off, and I just made this. I knew that that tackle was going to make me famous. And all I can remember hearing is the guy over the loudspeaker was saying, that tackle was made by John Du... John Du... Number 32 made that tackle. <laughs> the guy didn't know how to say Dutch and Dorf. <laughs> really ticked me off. Well, we... We went back to the school afterwards. You know, you always go back to your gym, and they have a victory dance if you win, and you have a moping dance if you didn't win. But we always celebrated. We had a pretty good team in those days. And I walked into the gym, and I was going to be cool. You know, I'd made this incredible tackle that night, and I knew that I had it made. And I walked in there, and I was looking for all the girls and everything, and uh, all the girls were taken. <laughs> Michael Grady had a girl. He always had a girl. I stood there, man. I thought somebody would recognize me from that fantastic tackle. And then I figured it out. Nobody knew me. They didn't know that I was number 32. <laughs> that was the first time they'd seen that number all year. <laughs> what I should have done, I guess, was wear my football jersey to the dance. Ah, uh, but who's going to dance with a skinny kid in glasses and a dirty football jersey? <laughs> and the wrong kind of white sock. <laughs> well, I never could dance much in high school anyway. I was always playing in the band. But this past week, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, <laughs> I have been working on a dance number, and you, Michael O'Grady, eat your heart out. <laughs>
nice. Goodman and Kaiser and Miller help make things right. Pinch and hot licks with vanilla. Jukebox Saturday night. you under my skin I have got you deep in the heart of me so deep in my heart 
you are a part of me. I have got you under my skin. I have tried, so I've tried not to give in. I have said to myself, this affair ain't gonna go so well. But why should I try to resist when, baby, I know damn well that I've got you under my skin. Sacrifice anything, come what might, for the sake of having you near, in spite of a warning voice, comes in the night, it repeats, repeats in my ear, don't you know, you fool, you ain't never gonna win, use your mentality, wake up to reality, and each time I do, just the thought of you makes me stop, before I begin. Cause I've got you under my skin. Yeah, leave some place to go now. Sacrifice anything, come what might, for the sake of having you near. Spite of a warning voice comes in the night. It repeats how it yells in my ear. Don't you know, you fool, you got no way to win. Why not use your mentality? Wake up, stand up to reality. And each time I do, just the thought of you makes me stop the thing more I begin. Cause I've got you under my skin And I dig you under my skin Close and say 
love you so. To have someone to share with and someone I can care with and that is why I wanted you to know. Sometimes I feel like a sad song Like I'm all alone Without you Without you Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harry James and his orchestra. music that made the 1940s the swingingest decade of them all. And I want you to know that I loved it. I mean, I wasn't even born yet till it was almost over. And the thing is, back in 1939, there was a young boy singer, even skinnier than me, with more hair, and he made musical history when he stood up in front of the Harry James Band and sang this song. at all Half a love never appeals to me If your heart never could yield to me Then I'd rather have nothing at all And if I fell under the spell of your call I would be I'd be caught in the undertow So you see I've got to say no No Oh Nothing at all
nothing at all. Now that, of course, is the theme of the great Tommy Dorsey Orchestra. And while all of America was dancing to that song, they were to hear a sound that was to change the whole future of popular music. that song was first heard, so was I. Boy, you know how to make a guy feel mature, don't well, you? Well, no, really. Frank, I mean, do you have any idea how many romances got started to your music? No, I don't, but I never got any of the action either. Oh, folks. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I want 
you to think about it. Not only was this gentleman the hit of three generations, he probably caused two of them himself. Oh, no. Go, sir! <laughs>
let me love you. It's for sure I'm gonna love you. that time when you hit that. <laughs>
On each of our last four specials, we've devoted a few moments to different creatures who are in danger of becoming extinct. We sang about the eagle, and I got to play a little bit with the grizzly bear, and we talked about the seal and the cougar. And tonight, I'd like to take a look at another creature who is in great danger of becoming extinct. And through the genius of America's great painter, Mr. Norman Rockwell, we dedicate this next piece to the most endangered species of all, ourselves. Those who find laughter in everyday life and in everyday jobs they achieve in. Those we elect who keep our respect and stand up for what they believe in. Doctors who still make a house call or two in spite of malpractice increases. TV repairmen, you know you can trust makers of autos that nothing can bust, and guys who think work is an absolute must, they're each an endangered species. People who simply refuse to grow old, whatever the season or weather. People content when the family hour meant much more than just being together. Folks who know children inherit the earth, our sons and their nephews and nieces. Kids who are good and occasionally bad. Kids who take after their moms or their dads. And kids who have chances their folks never had. They're each an endangered species big guys who look after little guys too husbands who aren't too demanding painters whose art comes direct from the heart with art which promotes understanding lovers who marry and, and marry for life not just till the honeymoon ceases people who aren't just long for the drive and folks who think show business ought to be live. And daughters back home before 135. They're each an endangered species. All of the people who work with their hands, who bring us our music and laughter. Each of us who, to his own conscience, is true. And all of the kids who will come after us. All of the people whose courage and love can make this a planet where peace is. The brown, the yellow, the black and the white. From workers in fields to spacemen in flight. People who know that unless we unite, we're all an endangered species.
John Denver and Friends, presented by Timex, the first name in timekeeping value. Timex makes a full range of durable watches for both men and women. They're sensibly priced and beautifully styled. No wonder more people buy Timex than any other watch in the world. Timex watches, they take a licking and keep on ticking. I would like to thank Norman Rockwell for the use of his painting. And I would like to thank Count Basie and Harry James and Nelson Riddle and the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra for lending us their music this evening. Above all, I would like to thank my good friend Frank Sinatra for being here with us. And I thank you, my friends, for allowing us to share this hour with you. Good night, everybody. I do thank you, and I thank you for coming out on a wet night like this to join us, and uh, Dick was absolutely correct. I think we've got a, a great show for you, and, and I want you to know that, uh, that the running order of the show tonight is a little bit differently than, than what you're going to see when it's on television March the 29th, and the reason that we're doing that, see, first of all, I'll come out, we're going to do some bluegrass music for you and some of the kind of stuff that you're used to hearing from me. And then you're going to get some stuff. Well, here I am in my tuxedo, and uh, Mr. Sinatra and I are going to sing together. And what I wanted you to know is that it is in deference to him that we're doing this early tonight. Frank, you know, a lot of people have a misconception about him. He's early to bed and early to rise. He wants to get home and get his rest. So we're doing uh, his little part of the show first so that he can, uh, he can get out of here. And uh, <laughs> the glasses, Frank. Uh, so I hope you enjoy yourselves, and uh, this part for me, last night uh, we did a medley of about 25 songs, and uh, this is just really, it's the first opportunity I've ever had of singing with him. I think he's, 
it's the finest singer that I've ever heard, and uh, I'm learning a great deal from him, and I started learning when we were together at Tahoe last, last summer. It's going to be dynamite, so enjoy yourselves, and uh, I'll get to talk to you more as the evening progresses. Thank you for being here. Mr. Sinatra, sir, I've said it many times, but I've never meant it more than now. I've, that's far out. Far out. Far out! <laughs> uh, excuse me, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I'm just thrilled to have you here with me tonight. Thank you. Know what you get from hollering in the mountains up there like that? Strong I want to thank you. Yes, I know. I want to yes. thank you, young fella, for coming down off the top of the wedding cake in order to tell me those pretty words. <laughs> Wedding cake? It's beautiful, yeah. Well, I guess... Your little Barbie doll. <laughs> <laughs> she should know, though, you've seen an awful lot of wedding cakes. The glasses, Frank. The glasses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really kidding, Frank. I'm, I'm thrilled to death to have the opportunity of working with you tonight. It's my pleasure, John. Uh, uh, appearing on television is right up there on my list of favorite things to do like uh, alongside of press conferences and root canal work <laughs> and that kind of stuff. I love to do this work. Well, I really do appreciate you being Will here. Will you hurry up? The bar's closed. I about <laughs> oh, my. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, John, I've known John Denver for a couple of years now. In my opinion, he is what the young people in this country are all about. He's not only a gifted composer and a performer, but he has a fine sense of social commitment and responsibility. He has, he's a credit to his generation, and I'm proud that he's my friend. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now, now, young man, I want to discuss your opening remarks pertaining to my amorous attitudes and passionate proclivities. Are you hip? <laughs> Frank, I didn't say nothing about your proclivities. What'd you say about my bird? As, as nothing about your bird, and it's for your amor... I was just kidding, Frank. I was just kidding about me all Me too, that. John. I was just kidding. Let me tell you something. I haven't done half the things they say I've done. Is that right? That's true. What about the other half? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Well, Frank... Far out, baby. <laughs> it, does, it does work. I personally would like to take this opportunity to thank you for making so many of us possible. It was my pleasure, John. Yeah, baby. When you see a guy reach for stars in the sky, you can bet that he's doing it for some doll. When you spot a John waiting out in the rain, chances are he's insane, as only a John can be for a Jane. When you meet a chance, paying all kinds of rent for a flat that could flatten the Taj Mahal. Call it sad, call it funny, but it's better than even money. That's a guy's only doing it for some dog. It hits notes I couldn't even swing at. There's very little he hasn't swung at either. Or with, baby, or oh, with. Now, Frank, listen. All that fooling around is great, but I like the simple life. But that's the whole trick about fooling around. You got to keep it nice and simple. 
When you see a dame change the shape of her frame, you can bet she's reducing it for some guy. When you find the doll with her diamond in hock, rest assured that the rock has gone to restock some gentleman jock. Yes. When you see a mouse hurrying out of the house, and she runs 20 blocks for cigars and rye. Call it dumb. Call it clever. Ah, but, but you give me this vibe forever. That the dolls only doing it for some guy, some guy, some guy. The dolls only doing it for some guy. Got him with bated breath. That's a beauty, guys. Fantastic. What did you expect? <laughs> I expect it good. One thing with a couple of bums or something. Last. Don't answer that. <laughs> um, last night we did a medley of 25 songs. Is that right? About 25. I was in about six of them. I don't know what you were doing with the other 22. <laughs> Anyway, they came in here, and like, you know, television for me has always been an all-evening affair. Take your time, John. Take your time. <laughs> Take your time. Go ahead. Take your time. Go ahead. I was trying to think. <laughs> anyway, we did that whole medley. We did it once. So much for the all evening affair. Anyway, we did it once. We did it once. Is that good? That's it. What's next? We want to do more. Goodbye. Goodbye, George. Thanks very much. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. 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 Thank you.